Hey, what's up? Ken in here, and on this episode of Camp Ken, we're hanging out with my buddy Jason Abels, and what's her name? That's Aja. It means uh, forest goddess in Madagascar. Well, we're gonna hang out with a little forest goddess here. We're, we're talking lemurs, folks. Stick around. There are two things I've loved most in this life, bikes and reptiles. Now, I crisscross the globe learning about all kinds of incredible animals. Sometimes, I know what I'm doing. Other times, I'm in over okay, my head. Wrong. But one thing's for certain, we'll come away a whole lot smarter after every adventure. This is Camp Kennedy. So I'm really excited to be hanging out with the lemurs, man. And Jason Abels and I, we've known each other on Facebook for, for a while, while. For a while now. We know a lot of the same people, so I'm excited to actually talk to you about what you're doing. And upon coming into his facility, it's at your home, but it is an incredible enclosure you have here for these animals. Yeah. What got you into lemurs in particular? I have loved lemurs since I was a little kid. You yeah. Know, I, you know, you know when you're little what you're gonna do, and uh, you know I was sick as a kid. Okay. And what you had? Your childhood. I leukemia. had leukemia as, wow. a, as a young kid, and uh, very sick at a time where it wasn't you know as curable as it is now. And there was a day they allowed me to go to the, the old Cranian Park Zoo, and I knew wow. if I did well that I was gonna do something with lemurs or, or big cats or wildlife in general. And and yeah. then that's what you do. You do yeah. lemurs, you have the uh, bush babies, and you also have partners with, with uh, David, Tiger Homes. Yeah, uh, Tiger Homes. Fantastic. Correct, which is a big animal sanctuary specializing in you know, education and conservation of big cats. And in addition to that, there's a lot of radiated tortoise walking around here, as well as sulcata and beautiful herd of galops. But, you know, the thing about lemurs, you know, I don't know much about them. I know they're, as you mentioned, pro-simian, and that means pre-monkey. Pre -monkey. So pre -monkey. The, these are the earliest evolutionary uh, primate that exactly, we have. Exactly. The least evolved, most primitive, and the earliest fossil records of any known primate. So, you know, these animals, are they only found in Madagascar? Uh, Prosimians are found in other places around the okay. world, but, but lemurs are only found exclusively on the island of Madagascar. So what's it like to, to work with these animals in captivity? I mean, this is a high energy animal. I high mean, she's, energy. High she's energy. She's everywhere. They require quite a bit of environmental enrichment, but that's any animal in captivity, whether it be a mammal or a reptile or, you know, uh, you, you name it. If it's in captivity, uh, environmental enrichment is critical, but that's uh, especially true when concerning any primate, okay. much less a prosimian. And you're, you're Forte, actually, which is, gets me so pumped up about you, Jason, is the fact that you believe in spacious enclosures. Yeah. You're like a man yeah. after my own heart. I don't care if it's yeah. a snake or exactly. it's just the way I am, exactly. you know. And upon walking in here, we're actually standing in one section of the cage. Yeah. There's actually a, a yeah. highway you've yeah. made that there's an identical enclosure yeah. on the other side. So, yeah. you know, for these guys, what are some of the challenges that people may kind of get into one of these animals real quick and not expect, what are some of the things you can expect, the challenges of keeping these animals in captivity? Well, for one thing, you know, I don't particularly think they make great pets for personal yeah. pets. People don't have the long-term commitment for them. I mean, you know, if you own any of these animals, you're a slave to these, taking care of these animals. I don't go on vacation. It's, it's wow. very difficult to, to leave your property. Um, it creates, you know, a big liability if somebody gets bit, and people will get bit. I mean, yeah, talk to me about to, that, know, man. You, you know, you gave us the speech like, hey, look, you know. Yeah, these are wild animals. Right. You know, and they, yeah, they're cute. They're pretty. They're they're 99% of the time they're very sweet, but they are wild animals, and you have to always be careful. Yep. And what uh, what kind of damage are we talking about? Like if this animal. I've seen goes. some horrific injuries with lemurs if they get people on the face, the nose, the eyes, the lips. But you know, in general, if it's a, it's a superficial bite, if you only get bit one time, it's usually 16 stitches with a rough lemur. Okay. You know, like I mentioned, you know, all their lemur bites are about the same length, you know, per tooth, and the way that they bite you is typically they thrust a canine tooth into you, and then they tear and rip their head. So they like fedoras also. Yeah. So yeah, they love. Well, they basically love in the sweat on your head. Oh, you know, right they're on. the salt. You know, and, so and they these, love hats. These animals are herbivores or are they omnivores? Uh, the, the, uh, the rough lemurs of all the lemur species are the most, they're basically frugivores. They're the, oh, they, wow. they eat the most amount of fruit of any other lemur species. Um, so these guys get a lot of different assortment of fruits and vegetables. Um, I don't feed any vitamin C. No citrus, um, and then they get obviously the uh, the Zupreme uh, primate biscuits as well. But they get uh, a lot, uh, a huge variety of different kinds of produce. 
And I'm fortunate that Publix actually donates to me quite a bit. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, they That's my next me. question. Years ago, I had gone to Costa Rica, and right. we did a little interview with a monkey sanctuary. Right. And now, obviously, they're not monkeys, right. but I'm curious about this. If the fruit is bruised a little bit, right. or if it doesn't look good, the monkeys don't want it. Are these right. guys similar? Like They're not. They're, they're not. not. In fact, um, a lot of primates actually prefer the over-ripened really? fruit. Really? Uh, a little sweeter, like they they won't like a banana if it's not perfect, you know, and a little bit on the ripe side. Okay. You know, so uh, which is actually beneficial. A lot of times in in different parts of the world, at, you know, civilized people believe that these are pests in some places. Different different primates, different animals that eat their crops. Gotcha. But like fruit bats are a big one. They're killing fruit bats like they're going out of style. But the people don't realize that they only eat the ripe fruit, and if without the fruit bats eating the ripe fruit, you can't disperse the seeds. Well, not even that. What happens is they get fruit flies take over the whole oh. crop and destroy the whole crop because all the rotten fruit is there and they're putrefying. No way. So it's actually a beneficial thing to have fruit bats that eat rotten fruit or overripe fruit. They're thinning you know, out. Same too. thing with the fruit lemurs, and you know, they're shot on sight in many parts of uh, Madagascar, wow. which is sad. Do they eat them as bush meat as well? They, can, they do in places, not quite as much as the radiators, but they are you know, being killed for bush meat. And the problem with them in the wild is, which are real, everything in Madagascar is really going out of business quick. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're destroying the habitat over there like it's going out of style. It's literally, you know, melting into the ocean. From outer space, you can see all the dirt dispersing into the ocean from all the way around the because all the tree roots are gone. Wow. You know, without the tree roots gone, holding the soil in. And it's a in, shame because yeah. Madagascar is one of those bio-diverse uh, hotspots like makes Costa Rica. The, yeah, apparently, it makes the Galapagos look like a joke as far as the number of endemic species. You know, they're found wow. nowhere else. I mean, it's, it's one of the most biodiverse places on Earth with everything, you know, I don't know what the percentage is, but a high percentage is endemic nowhere else. Wild. How many, how many hours is into this enclosure? You know, you've got to keep it yeah. in a way that, that interests them, don't you? Yeah, the truth is all the habitat furniture in here gets changed every six months as part really? of my environmental enrichment protocol. So basically... That's funny. It's not like a, like tortoises are nah, creatures of habit. Right. They don't want yeah. things changed. Yeah. These guys I take these rope do downs and string these ropes around in a different way. It's a whole new habitat to them, awesome. you know? And like I mentioned earlier, believe it or not, people are really thrilled with the size of these habitats. But for me personally, they're way too small. And I'm going to get ready to tear all these habitats down and rebuild quadruple the size. So you know, sick. I'm going to go higher and I want to go bigger. And these guys are going to be able to run and get their turbo on because these guys will tear food through the canopy forest like it's nothing. How many of these in a troop? Would it be a troop of lemur? How yeah, do, not what do they quite call like, like ringtail lemurs get into huge troops, okay. uh, colonies. And uh, they basically can get 30, 40 animals or more. You know, the rough lemurs pretty much stay more in, in family groups okay. um, until the, uh, the males get a little older and then they're kicked out. An interesting thing about uh, lemurs, in particular with rough lemurs and ringtail lemurs, um, is that they're a female dominant society. Really? Yeah, so. They're matriarchal. Ma completely matriarchal. Um, the females have more important to a society with, with these guys, so the females are given right to the first food. Um, their survival is paramount to the males. The males are completely submissive, usually, to the females. Certain times of breeding Basically season. like my house. Yeah, basically. Okay, yeah, you know, the, the females have much bigger teeth, you know? You <laughs> yes, should, you they know, do. Especially the Columbia. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, man, that's yeah. awesome. Oh, no, I, got sh I got shafted. Yep. What are you doing here? What are There's you so doing? much action. There's so many new people here. So doing? this is fantastic. I really appreciate you taking the time oh, to my let pleasure, us man. come my over pleasure. here and check this out. Uh, there you have a fantastic pro simian, the rough lemur. Oh, and right on cue, she's coming to say goodbye to you guys. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next week. Bye, baby. She's kind of cute. Oh. <laughs> All right.